Hi, I'm Jordan. Welcome to my art studio. So it's currently 90 degrees here in Seattle and it's just too hot to make art right now. So instead I thought today I would go through some of my old work that I've made over the last year or so and maybe give you some ideas for art projects that you can try out yourself. I like to be in the habit of doing something creative every single day, but sometimes I come into the studio and I sit here at this desk and I just have no idea what to even make. Like I have the motivation to make art, but I don't necessarily have the inspiration or the ideas. A lot of times I feel like you just need one little idea to start like get the ball rolling and then more ideas will flow. But it just starts with one little thing. So whatever sounds exciting, follow that and then see what that leads to because you never know what other ideas will come after. I pulled out a bunch of my boxes where I keep my old art. So I'm just gonna go through these and show you some of the things that I've made and some of the things that have been the most fun for me to work on. And maybe this will inspire you to try some of these out. Okay, let's see. I think I'll start looking through one of these boxes. I love these boxes for storing art. They are just big document boxes. I forget the exact size. I think it might be like 12 by 24 or something around there. Let's see. So this is all more recent work. Sometimes just looking through these boxes of my old art makes me want to get out my supplies and start making stuff again. I don't know, just all these colors and everything, it makes me excited to paint. So first thing I think I wanna show you are these paintings. So my first idea for you and my go-to if I am feeling creative but don't know what exactly to make, I like to do abstract art, which for me just means getting out a bunch of my supplies that sound exciting to use and just playing with them without really any um, intention to make something specific, just seeing what I can do with the materials. So here is an example of what I mean. I did these abstract paintings recently and I started with one giant piece of paper that I then taped off into these different sections. And then I pulled out my paint and colored pencils and some other materials and I just let myself play with the materials with no intention other than making interesting marks and trying out different like techniques with painting to see what I could do with it. And then I ended up really liking how these turned out. I love that they are even more interesting the more you look at them. Like if you really focus in on some of these details I just love some of this texture. So this is an idea for you if you just need something kind of low pressure, but still fun and gives you interesting results. Abstract painting could be an idea to try out. So another idea for you is painting on wood panels. I buy these cheap plywood panels from the craft store and you can get these in all kinds of different shapes and sizes, but I especially love this little rectangle. These are so much fun to paint on and there's so many different things that you can do with these. So first of all, I just really love painting on wood and I love having a little painting like this to hold in my hands. I don't know, something about this is just really satisfying for me. And I love experimenting on these with different techniques. And let me show you some other things you can do with these. So I have these wall hangings that I made out of these same plywood boards. These are just oval shaped ones. And I love these so much. I have them hanging above my other table here in the studio. And this one I painted, this one I collaged on some paper and then decorated with um, these tiles. And I added the string, the beaded string to hang it. And these were so fun. And they were just made with these same plywood panels. Like it's amazing that you can take this and turn it into this. So just wanted to give you this idea for playing with wooden panels. So going off of the wooden panels idea, you can also try other surfaces to paint on. I feel like sometimes just switching up something as simple as the surface that you paint on can spark some new inspiration. So if you're like me and you typically paint on paper, then maybe try breaking out of that and try something new like the wooden panels or here are some other things that I've painted on that are fun. This is a metal tray from the thrift store and I just painted directly on it and I think it looks pretty cool. I like that this kind of frames it. So next time you're at the thrift store, look for things like this that you can transform into something new. 
This is illustration board that I painted on and I like this because it's a little bit sturdier than paper. Um, so this was fun to try out. I didn't love how these paintings turned out, but it was just about experimenting with the surface. So that's another idea. And then finally, this is chipboard. You could also use cardboard, but this is super cheap and um, you can find it pretty easily at most art stores. And I painted this on it and this is really fun. I wanna do more on chipboard. I'm a big fan of making art with affordable materials. So I love things like this. And once again, it's a little bit more sturdy than paper. So something about it just feels really nice in my hands. And I like this painting as well. And one more thing, I almost forgot to show you this. Another idea for a surface that you can try out. This is literally just a piece of scrap cardboard that I painted and then I used it as the canvas for this mixed media piece. My next idea for you is to make these swatch cards. At least that's what I'm calling them. So they are basically just mini collages that I did on these shipping tags. And these were really fun. I was just playing with fabric scraps and some other embellishments. There's paper and stickers in there as well. But I just made some fun little collages. And the point of this was just to play with the materials and make something pretty. Like, there's nothing I'm going to do with these in the end, you know, but they're just fun to make and I like to look at them. Sometimes I have the urge to make something more physical that I can like hold in my hands rather than a flat drawing on paper. I just love anything crafty and I love like holding things and making things with my hands. So sometimes I just need to get out of the painting and get into more of a craft project. So. In one of my recent videos, I showed you I was making these cardboard flowers. I'm still working on this project, by the way. Um, it's ongoing in the background, but these are really fun. These are literally just pieces of cardboard cut out and glued together, and then I decorated them. And then a while ago, I made these paper flowers. I have a few of them here. Um, I actually have more hanging up in the studio as a decoration, but these were made from just pieces of cardstock that I cut out in random shapes. And then I added hot glue around the edges so that it was kind of raised. And then I just painted them to make all these pretty little flowers. I love things like this that have no purpose. They're just fun to make and pretty to look at. And maybe this will turn into something one day and be used for a future project, but it was also just fun to make. And it doesn't matter if it never turns into anything else. I'm going to open up this box. So this is mostly older work. There is some newer stuff in here, but I wanted to pull out one thing specifically. Okay. My next idea is to make a collage poem. I used to make these all the time, but I haven't done it recently. These are really fun and pretty simple. I just took old magazines and old books that I thrifted cut them up and made these poems. Um, I would just cut out words from old books and then kind of just arrange them until a poem formed. Like I didn't plan it out ahead of time. Um, I didn't write it ahead of time or anything. I just cut out the words and it almost seems to come together by itself. Like you just start pairing together words that sound good and then before you know it, you have a poem. And then I would um, pick images and um, add them to go with the poem. So this is an idea. It's super simple and you don't need that many supplies um, and you can make these beautiful collage poems. So another idea kind of going along with the collage is to make a cutout painting. I have two over here on the wall that I've done. These are really fun. So what I did with these was I started with a giant piece of paper and I just painted a bunch of random things, just whatever came to mind. I just kind of like doodled on the paper. I let that dry and then I cut out all the individual images and then I just played around with different compositions and arranging them in different ways until I found something that I liked and then I glued it on the piece of paper. And yes, I could have painted these directly on the final piece of paper instead of doing the whole like cutting them out and gluing them onto another piece of paper, but it was more about the process of playing with the composition that I found really inspiring. 
I love collage and I just love the look of the paper layered and glued onto another piece of paper. As I've said before, I just love anything that really looks handmade. So I think that's why I really enjoy collage, but this was really fun for me to do. So if it sounds fun to you, then give it a try. Another creative idea for you to try out is block printing. And this is more simple than you might think if you've never tried it. So all you need is a rubber stamp block, which you can get at most art stores, and then a carving tool. I have this very basic one from Speedball, but it works great. It has all these different nibs to carve. So you just draw whatever design you want, and then you carve it, and you're left with this really cool stamp, and you can make prints out of this. Here's an example of a print. I really love how this one turned out. This is my most recent block that I've carved. I also did this. But there's so many different things you can use these for. I've printed on tote bags before. Some of you might remember I did that years ago and made these really pretty decorative tote bags actually with this rose stamp. Um, but they're just really fun and I love that it's a more physical form of art because you're literally carving. So it's nice to switch up things every now and then and um, do something like this. So similar to block printing, kind of in the same vein, is mono printing, which I have only experimented with a few times, but it's been really fun. So I just wanted to give you the idea if you want to try it out. These are some of the first mono prints that I made. So they're kind of messy because I was still learning the technique, but I actually really like this kind of messy result that I got. If you want to try out mono printing yourself, I would just recommend looking up some tutorials online. That's what I did to learn how to make these. And I'm still learning. I don't know all the proper techniques, but it's been really fun to experiment with. And I just used materials that I had on hand. So I just used these like plastic, um, I don't even know what they're called, like stiff pieces of plastic or acrylic. I have a bunch of these. Um, I just ordered a pack of these on Amazon and I use them for various things, but they worked great for the mono printing. So this is a cheap option to test out the mono printing if you are interested. Now let me flip through my sketchbooks and show you some ideas of things that you can try out in your sketchbook. This is one of my older sketchbooks. It's already all filled up but I wanted to show you my go-to if I want to do a sketchbook page but I don't know what to do. This is my go-to. If I don't know what to do in a sketchbook page, I just fill a page with random doodles. And this one specifically, I stuck with a single medium and just used liquid charcoal to do all of these. And I ended up really enjoying how the page turned out. You can stick with a specific theme if you want, like I did here, I just try to do different bugs, although I didn't finish the page, but it still looks cool. You can also just do a bunch of random things that don't really make sense, but are just fun to draw. Another example of just a bunch of random doodles. Here's another one, I really love how this turned out. But it's just supposed to be low pressure and kind of just stream of consciousness, draw whatever first comes to mind. Here's another example of a page of doodles from another sketchbook. And this was all done with watercolor and then that liquid charcoal again. And one more from my more recent sketchbook. Here's just a page of pencil drawings. Another idea for you that you can do in your sketchbook is color swatching. And this is something I do all the time just so I can learn my paint and learn all the different colors that I can get out of it. So let me show you an example. So here's a page of swatches that I did. And this isn't just the paint straight out of the tube, but it's actually two colors mixed together. And then I would add white to see what that would make. So let me show you what I mean. For example, this color right here is green gold mixed with raw umber, and that's what I got. And then I added a little bit of white to that, and that's the shade that I got. So I did that with all my different paint. Over here, this is phthalo green plus raw sienna, and then this is what it looks like when I add white. So try this out if you want to test out your materials and see all the different colors you can get. Um, this is just color swatches of colored pencils that I have. Um, so I did a bunch of different colored pencils here just to see what they actually looked like, 
and then I did a select palette here. And these are actually the colors that I keep in my little zipper pencil pouch that I take on the go. So I just narrowed down what I actually really wanted to have in my palette from all of these colors. Also, a lot of times I'll do color swatching like this where it's just really messy just to see what the paint looks like. Also, I love starting out a sketchbook with color swatches because it's just an easy way to break it in without really feeling like I have to do something beautiful on the first page. So that's what I typically do on the very first page of my sketchbooks. Another idea for you if you're kind of stuck with what to draw or what to paint, go to the thrift store and find some interesting books that you can use as reference for your art. These are two of my favorite books that I've thrifted for art reference. I love going to the gardening book section because you can always find cool books that have all these pretty plants that you can draw or paint. And actually this is the book that inspired some of the paintings you see up here on my wall. I started doing this series of different plants and I've been using this as the inspiration. And this isn't a plant book, but this has been so wonderful for art reference, specifically for figure drawing. It just has the most beautiful photos of the human form. And I love flipping through this and drawing some of these figures in these different poses. Here's an example of some quick little drawings that I did from this book specifically. I used ink and a paintbrush and just did these really quick sketches. And this was really fun. And I actually need to pull this out and do this again because I really enjoyed it. But I've been trying to get better at painting humans and painting figures. So this is great help in learning how to do that. And finally, just a few more art ideas for you. I thought I would mention some of my recent video tutorials in case you haven't seen them. In my most recent video, I did a demo on how to make these woven paintings. These are really fun and these are a great way to mix up your normal painting routine and try something different. So go check that out if you haven't seen it. A couple weeks ago, I did a video on how to make one of these art books. These are really fun. I make these little books all the time whenever I don't know what else to make just because they always turn out interesting and I always like the results. So these are super fun. Go check out that video if you haven't seen it. And then last year I did a tutorial on how to make these mini clay frames and the art to go inside. These are really fun. I love how these turned out and you could hang these on the wall. You could add a magnet to the back and stick it on your fridge or just have this cute little piece of art. I hope that these ideas sparked some inspiration for you. Like I said earlier, I really try to make art every single day, whether or not I feel like it. I just think it's so easy to get caught up in thinking too much about what you wanna make instead of just making the thing. And the only way that you get better as an artist is through action, not through thinking about what you wanna do. And this is why I'm all about making bad art and not being a perfectionist about anything creative because the point of it is just to make something. You're not supposed to make a masterpiece every single day. You're just supposed to do something small to work towards the bigger goal of living the life of an artist. You know, sometimes you just need to get in the studio and smear paint on paper and call it a day and that's fine. Any action is progress. It's just like going to the gym. Not every workout is going to be the best workout in the world but it's not about doing the best workout every single time. Any movement at all is making you stronger and you can't make your muscles grow by sitting and thinking about how you're gonna make them grow. You just have to do the action. It's the exact same thing with art. You can't sit there and think about it too much. You just kind of have to do it and trust that if you put in the work, you will see the results. No matter what it is, if you do something every single day, you will eventually see improvement. So go get out your supplies and have fun making something.